guys welcome back to another video it's me Aaron and this is photography feels and today we've got something a little bit different on a side note I finally managed to pick up um, a new MacBook with the M1 chip. So the next video, I'm gonna be doing a little video about how I find it works for me and whether I think it's worthwhile getting. So stay tuned for that video. But like I say, today's video is all about jewelry photography. So I feel like I can pass on a little bit of inside knowledge, um, pass on what I do to make, hopefully, your jewelry photography look a little bit better. So let's jump into setting the studio up, if you like. It's not a studio, it's my spare bedroom, but we're gonna call it a studio. So we're gonna jump in, set the studio up, see how we go about making some cool jewelry photography. So let's go. Okay guys, here we are. So we are behind the scenes in my spare bedroom slash photography studio. Uh, okay, here we go. So basically, um, my setup is two lights. Um, let me walk you through my lighting setup. So here we have one flash. Now the flash is very cheap. Um, it's, I think it's called a Young, Young Newo or something. YN, YN560. So then I have two of those set up. One, which is my main one, the higher up one here, which is the main flash, which is shooting through this diffu diffusion panel. Now again, this is super cheap. This is a five in one reflector. Um, so I've got that set up to basically make this light a larger light source. So if I was to just use the flash, the flash is a very small light source, which is gonna cause the light to be really harsh. Um, and we don't want that. We want soft, bright, white, smooth, even light. So we shoot through a diffuser and that causes the light to be much more soft. Then our second light, which is here, which is set up behind um, the jewelry itself, is there to make our background and our, our white backdrop much whiter. That flash is basically there to just make everything in the background go super nice, super white. Then our next piece of lighting equipment is these really expensive pieces of white plastic. <laughs> and basically I use these as reflectors. So I place them here just like this. And basically what that does, it reflects the light that's coming from the top and behind and bounces it back into the front of the jewelry. Another added benefit of those, it cuts out all of the reflections which come from behind the camera. The jewelry re reflect me, for example. These two pieces of plastic actually stop the reflections as well as bouncing the light back into the jewelry. The camera itself is the Nikon Z6. I've got that and then for my lens, I've got the 70, uh, 24 to 70 f4. And then also because I'm shooting jewelry, I need to get a little bit closer so I've got the Viltrox macro tubes, which I got when I got the camera, but they just basically give my 24 to 70 basically macro capability. Oh, and one last thing is the flash trigger. So this comes in a kit with the flash, the Young Neuros that I was talking about. Um, I'll put links in the description to where you can buy all of the equipment and things. Uh, but yeah, as I say, super simple. Um, that's basically my equipment. Obviously light stands, uh, again, super cheap. Um, nothing to shout about and my tripod again super cheap does what I needed to do now Let's go and take a look at how I actually set my camera up to shoot um, the jewelry photography. Let's go Okay guys, so now we're looking at the camera um, So basically my settings are super simple. I shoot at f20 basically to give me um, enough depth of field and um, in one shot or as much depth of field in one shot as I can get. Um, then I'm shooting at one two hundredth of a second, which is basically going to eliminate all of the ambient light in the room. The room is quite dark and the only light that will be in the image is actually the, the light from the flash. So then I have my flash power set to um, my main light, which is the high up light shooting down is set to one eighth power. So that's my main light. That's where the most of the light in the scene is gonna come from. Then the light that's behind the scene. So the light, this light here, that light is gonna be set to 164th power. I have the ISO set to um, 400. 
um, that's, that's more than good enough on a modern full frame camera. You're not gonna see any noise at all and the image quality is gonna be absolutely perfect. Um, so then the other thing I have is I have my timer set to a two second timer. That will just, to be to be absolutely sure that I'm not gonna get any camera shake when I hit the shutter button. Um, so I'm gonna have my timer set to two seconds and then also manual focus. So I just go into manual focus and then I will be manually focusing on the gemstone once I have it in position. So yeah, that just about covers the camera settings. Okay, so now you've seen um, how I set the camera up. So now we're gonna start shooting. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I have the jewelry on a, a little rotating display, but when the video lights turned off, it doesn't rotate. And what that means is the jewelry can be on this and I can quickly and easily move that around um, just like this, which means it's very easy for me to change the jewelry position. So I can shoot it from the front angle, quickly turn the rotating display, shoot the back angle. Then all I have to do is pick the jewelry up, flip it onto the, onto the bottom side, and then shoot the third angle, um, which means I can get the three angles of the jewelry, what the client wants very quickly. So yeah, let's jump into shooting the jewelry. As you saw, that took me maybe, I don't know, five minutes to shoot the three angles that the client wants for each piece of jewelry. Okay, so now all we have to do is take those raw files, put them into Lightroom, and then do our tweaks in Lightroom, take them into Photoshop to do the final touches. So I'll see you in Lightroom, let's go. Okay guys, here we are in Lightroom. Um, so yeah, here you can see our three, our three files. So. We're recording here at the top. So here we go. We're gonna jump into the first image. So the very first thing I would do is just zoom in and check sharpness. Okay, so we're gonna look around the stone and check that everything is sharp, which it is. Um, obviously we're shooting manual focus. Um, the chances of you missing focus are basically, you, yeah, it's impossible. Um, it would be about like super, super slight. Um, and in this case, in this scenario, that's not gonna matter. So um, yeah, so once we know that the stone is sharp, then we can start making our adjustments. So we're gonna go into the develop module. We're gonna go into crop and we are going to set a one by one crop. We're in, at this point, obviously you can just tweak any, if you need to straighten the image in any way, then you can do that now. And we're just gonna crop down so that the stone is in the middle of the shot and hit enter, done. Cropping, finished. So, um, with jewelry photography, obviously color accuracy is the main concern, especially with selling gemstones. So, I actually don't touch color at all, hardly. Um, the only thing I will ever do is tweak white balance ever so slightly if I feel like the image is too blue or too yellow or cold or warm. Um, so I would tweak white balance potentially, but not always. Um, and then, the next thing I would do is set the background behind the image to white. So you do that by uh, right clicking anywhere in the background and you've got a list of options here. Set it to white. Then the first thing I do is slide my whites over to white. Now, as you can see, the, the gradient between the image and the background, once we are completely white, will disappear. Perfect. Okay, so this is an e-commerce shoot, so we want that pure white background. Um, I find this is the easiest way to make sure that I get pure whites. Um, once we've done that, then we can look at tweaking our blacks if we want more or less contrast. Uh, same with shadows. If we crush our shadows, you can see that the stone is almost black. We don't want that. Um, so we can pull our shadows up to see if that 
reveals any more detail that we might like to use. For my, in my opinion, it doesn't. So I'm just gonna leave it at maybe plus eight, that's fine. Um, and then we can play with our highlights as well because we've already pushed our whites so far to the, to the point basically all of the detail in the white is gone now because they are pure white. Um, the highlight is not going to affect that. All that the highlights might do is bring out some detail within the stone where those white points have not reached the point where they are completely blown out. Um, so we can have a little look at the highlights. We can pull them down a little bit just to get a little bit more detail in the stone. Um, so now at this point, to me, the white balance looks fine. So I'm not going to touch the white balance. The white balance looks as it should. Um, so now, very very quick we're going to take it into photoshop so to do that i would right click on the actual photo edit in adobe photoshop and um, it will open up automatically it will take me straight into photoshop and open the image ready to edit so here we are um, from this point super simple we're going to hit command j now i just want to say this this is definitely not an editing tutorial or like an in-depth editing tutorial especially not in Photoshop because I'm definitely not a Photoshop a Photoshop expert I find that I do 90% of my editing in Lightroom um, but stuff like this with gemstones and things where you have to be really precise then I take it into Photoshop to do those real fine tweaks so anyway here we go on our separate layer we're gonna just zoom in to our stone and see if we need to make any adjustments. So if there's any large blemishes, any specks of dust on the backdrop, anything that shouldn't be there that we can get rid of, um, then we can get rid of that now. Again, in this particular instance, we don't need to. If we did need to, we would just go simply into our eraser um, and then we can just click on our specks of dust to get rid of them, um, really easy super simple and we just go and clean all the specks of dust away that we feel shouldn't be there so once we've done that then we can create another layer so we we'll commit command j again which gives us another layer and then once we've done that we're going to select our brush tool so we can either press the b key or go over here into our side menu and select the brush tool so we're going to change our mode to color and I find it's best to keep the flow low. I keep the flow around 10, 11%. Then we're gonna hold our option key and we're gonna find an area where the stone looks to have gone black. So let's use here to start with. So we're gonna just click this blue color here. So now we've sampled that blue color. We can then paint that blue color in to where the stone has gone black. So now the trick here is to not go overboard. Um, we don't want to make this look fake. We don't want the stone to go overly saturated. So um, yeah, this is definitely a case of less is more. Um, so I'm going to do this real quick, speed it up, and then I'll talk to you when I've done this, when I finish this step here, okay? Okay, so there we go. Once we get to this point, it's this looks overdone, okay? So what we can do is we can go into our opacity here. We can click on our opacity and pull it right back. Now you can see at this point, that's how the stone used to look. Now look how black some of the stone looks. Obviously, we don't want that. We want it to be a little bit more balanced. So we're gonna pull our opacity back up to the point where we feel is a nice happy medium between being too much and not enough so I'm gonna go for around about 50 or 60 percent it's usually that usually works well so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the background layer I'm gonna flatten the image then I'm gonna duplicate the layer again then we're gonna go to filter sharpen smart sharpen and then in here we are gonna add some sharpening to the stone so if I come in here you can see how sharp this stone is okay I like to do a small bit of sharpening so I'm going to apply maybe let's say 70% let's say 75% sharpening okay um, radius again this is personal preference so again I keep this down to a minimum 
um, maybe like 1.2, 1, 1.2 1. is fine. Um, again, reduced noise, personal preference. There is no noise in the image because it was shot with flash at a relatively low ISO, so there's no noise in the image to, to worry about. So I'm gonna keep redu reduced noise down to 10%. Um, uh, when we're finished, we click OK, and now we have applied the sharpening to the image. So the last thing I do, just personal preference, before I move it back to Lightroom, I just, again, right click, flatten the image. This basically means that when it goes back into Lightroom, the file size is much smaller than if you leave the layers in the photograph. Um, it just makes the file size much more hand, much more manageable. Um, so from this point, we're just gonna close, save, and we're gonna go back into Lightroom. And you'll see we have our edited, fully edited stone just here, okay? So I'm gonna put the final image on screen now. And there we go, guys. So I hope that video has given you some sort of insight into how I go about shooting my product photography, and in this particular case, jewelry photography in my home studio, which is my spare bedroom. I'd like to emphasize the fact that you don't need to spend fortunes to make good quality photography. Um, so yeah, I hope you've learned something. Um, I would like to make a few more of these videos when I have different products to shoot. Um, so if it's something that you'd like to see more of, drop a like, subscribe and leave a comment in the comments section and let me know what you'd like me to make next. Um, as I said before in the, at the start of the video, we're going to do a review on the M1 MacBook Air. Very non-technical, very photography based. Um, so yeah, that's it for now guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one.